Today, I'm gonna to talk about my winter running essentials for 2019 to 2020. Six point five five miles, nine minutes thirty six seconds per mile, with an average heart rate of one hundred and forty one beats per minute. In some chilly temps, temperatures were below freezing today. Uh, it's been a very early start to the winter here in Chicago and in most of the Midwest in the United States, and it has definitely caught me by surprise. This is a video that I usually don't make until a little bit later in the year, or I may, I think about the same time this year, but it's uh, usually not needed until a little bit later. I like to try to get ahead of things, but it's been really cold. I know you guys have been asking for this video. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. You guys, I've been directing you to my previous years of winter running video. This year, the concepts are gonna be pretty much the same. I mean, it's weather running in the cold, uh, the concepts don't change all that much, but I am gonna update them with a couple of things that I uh, tweaked and changed last year to this year and some new things that I've picked up for uh, running that I'm gonna be using because this year uh, I'm training for a marathon in January, which was the first time I ever had a winter marathon to train for. So things are gonna be a little bit different. I'll go over that. But before I do that, I do wanna go over some disclosures today. All the stuff that's in this video, I think all the stuff that's in this video uh, is stuff that I bought with my own money. No one sent any of this to, stuff to me. Uh, no one is paying to get into the video. No one's paying me to make this video. And obviously no one's gonna get a chance to preview any thoughts before you guys get a chance to see it on YouTube. So with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about some winter running essentials. I'm gonna do it, it can get overwhelming, so uh, I'm gonna do it from head to toe. Uh, but before I get into that, the main thing that I wanna think about is, from an overall perspective, is uh, when I think about cold weather running, I think about layers, that's one thing. And in line with that, um, I think of things as like a cold, colder, coldest. Um, but to, for the good news is there's, there's really only cold and colder that I think about. When it gets time to think about coldest, there's only a couple of things that really change, but for the most part, coldest weather running is just a combination of your cold and colder weather running gear put together. So l let's start from head to toe. So from head, uh, I usually like to wear a winter running cap. I love running in winter running caps. And uh, this year, one that I've picked up is this brand, it's Merino Wool. Merino Wool is uh, pretty good for uh, winter uh, running, uh, it uh, wicks sweat relatively well, uh, but it also helps keep you warm. I picked up a two pack of these hats, which I really like. Um, on the inside, they have a fleece liner, so right around um, the ears and the forehead. Uh, it feels really great, and it's just an extra layer of material to help keep you warm. They're by a company called Cascade. Uh, price was really great. Fit is really great. Uh, I'll be getting a lot of use out of this. There's a two pack, one's black, one's gray. Perfect for me, so I really enjoy that. Um, the other thing, when it gets to be even colder, um, is that I might reach for a balaclava. Now, a balaclava is something that looks basically what I would call like an old school robber mask. Um, and what it is, is it combines a head uh, covering with a face covering and um, it's just one big piece that goes together. This one is by Self Pro, just another thing that I picked up on Amazon. When I look for these things, one of the things that I look for is an area right over where the mouth is that's also stretchy and a little bit like mesh or ventilated so that way the hot air can get in and out, uh, that's important. Now this balaclava is pretty thin but I usually don't find that I need a very thick balaclava even for the coldest of temperatures. And I don't, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because it's a single piece and there's no other places for the heat to escape. But even where I would want like my thickest winter hat, if it gets even colder than my thickest winter hat, a balaclava, even though it's really thin, will do really well. It just 
keeps all the heat in really effectively. And when you're covered basically from everything except for a little sliver around your eyes, that also does goes a really long way to help keeping you warm. If it's the absolute coldest of days, then I will also, on addition to the balaclava, I'll also put on some ski goggles as well. You look really goofy running in ski goggles. Um, but uh, after a while, even just having that little sliver of your eyes showing uh, gets really painful. I've definitely had it where my eyelashes have frozen or the eyebrows have ice on them. Uh, this, the ski goggles are for the days where, you know, you're watching the morning news and they're saying that like, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes of cold air exposure will cause frostbite. That's where ski goggles come in. I bought this particular pair on Amazon because they were really cheap and I thought they uh, looked like they were part of a space helmet and so I thought that was kind of cool. But this year I think I'm probably gonna pick up a pair of more traditional ski goggles, ones that are clear. Because what I find is in the winter time, even during the day, it's not usually all that bright. Uh, I still do a lot of running when it's dark out, even in the winter. And so I want something that's not tinted. I wanted the mirror finish for the camera, but I think I need something that's gonna be clear. So I'll be going with some clear lenses later in this year. Moving down a little bit off the top of the head uh, and kind of in line with the balaclava is something that I'll wear once it starts getting a little chilly is a neck gaiter. Um, and this is one that I bought from Buff. Uh, this is one of my favorites and it's my two favorite colors, black and gray. And so this goes over your head and you can wear it a variety of ways. Usually the way that I wear buffs is that I will pull them over my head and have them come up like to my ears or maybe even above the ears in the back if it's really cold. And then it comes up over your mouth and nose, uh, like up to this level after that. They don't usually have to be very thick because as you're breathing out, you're breathing heavy, um, you're breathing hot air into it. And so it kind of is like a weird kind of dry suit kind of situation. So that works out uh, really well in keeping me warm. Once it gets a little bit colder than that one, because that one I think is just basically cotton, there's no elastic in it or anything like that. Then I like this one, which is uh, from Roadrunner Sports. Um, I bought this years ago, and I love this one because it has kind of this material on the inside, which is supposed to be good for keeping you warm, but also keeping moisture out. Keeping moisture out is really important in the winter time because anything that becomes wet with moisture eventually in the winter will become frozen with ice. And so uh, being able to kind of wick away excess moisture is really important with this one. I like it. Plus there's a really great elastic on this one. So it always stays on my face. And even when sometimes, you know, during the run on a cold day, you still might get hot. So I might pull it down below my chin and run with it kind of down here for a little while. And then if I turn around and the wind's hitting me in the face again, I might want to pull it back up. The elastic does a really good job of making sure that it stays up on my face. Whereas if I have just a regular buff or neck gaiter that doesn't have elastic in it, when I pull it back up, it might have frozen in like a crumpled up position by the time I'm ready to put it back on my face. It takes some time after you breathe on it for a little bit, it'll kind of thaw out and then you could get it to mold to your face again a little bit better. But um, that's a little bit uncomfortable when that happens. It doesn't take a long time, but it does happen for a little while. So this one is definitely my favorite. You have to be careful though with the elastic because I've bought a couple of brands on Amazon that are very cheap, um, that look great, but the elastic is so good or the material is like too stretchy, I think, that when it covers my face, it's almost like it's too close on my face. And on some of those, when I'm breathing heavy, like when the air comes out of my mouth, it is like flapping against uh, my skin and it creates like these weird like farting noises <laughs> as I'm running and so, uh, I just ran in that one uh, very, very recently as well. And um, I kind of forgot that that one would fart a lot. And so uh, I was ending up running with uh, a farting face mask. Next, moving down, let's talk about what we're gonna do uh, for uh, upper body. For upper body, you know, I I think that if you got, want to go out and buy like a really nice winter running jacket, I think that's great. I don't think that's necessary. I think that people, if they wanted to, can run in just your winter coat, you know, and if you're running along the leg front and I saw you in like a super long winter coat, I wouldn't think anything of it. Uh, the thing is though, like you might sweat in it. And so do you really want to sweat a lot in your winter coat? Uh, that's not always the most comfortable thing because uh, People don't wash their winter coats, you know, with uh, as much regularity as your running clothes. 
So the way I like to think about it again is layers. If it's cool out, I'll just go with a long sleeve. Um, if it's really cold out, uh, I might go with uh, a long sleeve and then another layer, whether it's like a hoodie or even something I might use as like a rain layer. That combined with a long sleeve might be enough to get me through um, some coldish temps, like around freezing. Once it starts to get a little bit colder than that, uh, I add like another layer on top of that. So I'll go with like a long sleeve, like a long sleeve tech shirt, like maybe you got one from a race. Then I'll go with a hoodie or some other type of jacket that could just be like a cotton layer. And then I might put on uh, a vest. I got one from Uniqlo that was really, really cheap uh, that has like that puffy material inside it just to give myself that extra layer of warmth. If it's like really like I'm worried about cold uh, exposure type of cold, the thing that happens to me after like the hour mark is that my belly will start to get really cold and the skin will hurt as if I'm kind of like getting uh, like a cold burn almost. And so in those days, uh, that's when I usually like to wear a compression layer underneath. And so like a long sleeve compressive layer, then a long sleeve, then maybe my like a uh, running jacket or um, like a hooded sweatshirt, that kind of thing. That's how I'll take care of the upper body. In terms of the hands, um, hand warmers are like my best friend. I love hand warmers. Um, I, I run in them all the time. I run in them even when most people probably aren't even wearing gloves, just because for me, like the hands um, are gonna be uh, the weak point for me. Uh, I don't know if I have poor circulation or what, but my hands are always cold, so I love hand warmers. But there's still a couple of layers that I like to think about when I'm thinking about uh, how to protect the hands in cold weather for like if it's in the 40s like above freezing But I still feel like my hands are cold. Uh, I'll just go with thinner running gloves. I love uh, trailheads They tend to make really great Running gloves uh, of all different levels of thickness. These are ones that I picked up uh, just very recently because I had a different pair last year and I lost one of the gloves which is a real shame because I really love that pair. This pair is a little bit thinner. I don't like it quite as much. This is kind of at the borderline of like, if I'm gonna wear these, I'm not sure if I even really need gloves. But for me, if I'm not sure if I'll need gloves, I'll just put some on because you could always put them in a pocket. When it gets extremely cold though, that's when I reach for mitten. Last year, I had a pair of uh, mittens that my mother-in-law bought for me. They were like, uh, um, like a fleece material on the inside and deer skin on the outside, but they were gigantic. Whenever my mother-in-law buys me gloves, she always buys XL uh, for whatever reason. Um, I have small hands and so uh, they were huge, but they were great because I could fit hand warmers in there. I could clump my hand into a fist really easily and use like the body heat of the other fingers to keep everything warm. Um, this year I'm switching up a little bit. Um, this year I'm gonna go with Kraft. They make running and cycling apparel. They make a lot of cold weather apparel. I've been running with these already in some really cold temperatures and I absolutely love these gloves. They're padded on the top here and the materials that are on here are more wind resistant. And so wind's not cutting through these gloves and there's a lot of padding foam that helps keep everything warm. These are much better fitting on my hands so they're more comfortable to kind of run with, but there's still enough room in there for me to kind of and curl my fingers up and um, keep them tighter together and also to run even if I'm in the curled up position or not with the hand warmers in there. So that's been working out exceptionally well. So I've been very happy with these gloves. Uh, I've been running with them pretty much like every day uh, since it's now basically January weather in November in Chicago. Next, we'll move kind of further down, go to the legs. Going from the cold, colder, coldest mentality. And when it's cold out in the 40s or so, that's when I'll usually start looking for full length tights. I'll either run just in the tights on the bottoms or uh, I'll wear them with tights and shorts on top if it's a little bit colder than that or if the tights don't leave enough to the imagination for my liking. These days, a lot of companies are making kind of running tight pants, which I find to be like the nice uh, kind of splitting the difference. Um, so that's something that I've been running in a couple of pairs of those that I like. But typically, uh, I don't spend a lot of the year in just running in tights on the bottom because it in Chicago, the, the seasons change really fast from like hot summer to the cold winter like we had here. So there wasn't a really long time for me to running in just tights or even tights and shorts. Uh, but I do like that because the shorts on top, number one, uh, provide a little bit of modesty, but number two, also a place to put things because there's pockets. Most tights don't have pockets. 
um, although some do now, which I think is fantastic. Um, but also it's another like wind protection layer. Uh, just kind of like sometimes I was saying on my coldest runs, my abs might start to feel wind burn. Um, a lot of times my thighs and like my groin area will start to feel wind burn on really long runs. And so having a couple extra layers of protection in there with just more material is really, really helpful. Once it gets too cold for tights, kind of like uh, on the bottom, even with or without shorts, then I like to go to running pants. And there's two that I particularly like. This is a pair that I like. This is actually the second pair that I've bought. They're from TCA. You guys have been seeing these pants in a bunch of videos already. You might not have noticed it because this yellow TCA like fell off in the wash a long time ago um, on the other pair that I have. Uh, and I wish TCA would just make a black on black version because that would just be better. Um, but the pants are stretchy uh, in the back and in the waist, which I think is nice. And it's a very tapered uh, and slim fit from like the knee down to the uh, ankle, which I just absolutely love. These pants were like 20 bucks. I love to lounge around in these pants. I love to run in these pants. I like to sleep in the pants. Uh, I'm, I don't know what took me so long to buy two pairs of them, uh, but I'm glad I did. Well, the reason why I bought a second pair is TCA clothes, really great quality stuff, really great for running, extremely cheap. I'm not sure how they do it. But the one thing that I really don't like about their stuff is the zippers are terrible. The, that's just a problem with their product. Uh, the zipper on one of the pockets on the other pair of TCA pants that I have broke and that's why I bought this pair. Cause again, in wintertime pockets, I wanna put stuff in those pockets. Um, I need to put more stuff in my pockets than usual. I definitely wanna make sure I have some way of communicating with someone in case uh, I need, uh, someone to come help me if it's winter running time. So uh, whether that's an Apple watch or that's my actual phone, uh, I need to make sure I have some way of communicating in case maybe I've turned an ankle, maybe I've gone farther than I think I could have and I need to call a taxi or call an Uber. You know, I need some way of having stuff secured. So zipper pockets are really important. That's one drawback of TCA stuff, but otherwise really great find on Amazon and I highly recommend the, that product line. The other new, new pair of pants that I picked up for this year that I've been loving and running a ton in is from Kraft. I mentioned them as the running and cycling company that uh, made the gloves that, or the mittens that I've been really loving. This is a pair of pants that I recently picked up from them. They're not cheap. They were uh, really expensive pants. These are the Sub Z or from their Sub Z line, which uh, I love so much that uh, after running in these pants, I've also picked up a jacket in that. So you guys will be seeing that coming up as well. But what I like about their Sub Z line is that it has these like panels that, um, uh, provide extra wind resistance and uh, some protect additional protection from the cold. So I absolutely love these pants. Uh, like the TCA pants, they are relatively slim fit. Uh, lots of elastic where you need it. And from the knee to like the to the ankle, uh, it fits very closely to your leg. So very great to run in. Now, if it gets really, really cold, like if you're in single digit Fahrenheit temperatures or even the teens, uh, what I then like to do is then take my winter running pants and put underneath those a layer of tights or compression. Uh, that is what I'll do for the absolute coldest of days. Now, I've been mentioning like just kind of like I don't, I haven't really mentioned that I need layers to be thinner or less bulky because in the winter time, traditionally, I'm just thinking about um, getting the miles in, building winter base miles, not really worrying about it trying to like, usually my goals in the winter are like to maintain about 40 to 45 miles per week. This winter, I'm going to be shooting for much more than that and hopefully running faster than I've ever run in winter attempts before. And so it'll be interesting to see how like my preferences start to change once I start needing to run faster. But I suspect a lot of that's going to be relying heavily on the treadmill for some of that faster work, but also some of these other more winter specific layers that are running based rather than just like say any old hoodie. Some of this stuff from Kraft and TCA I think is gonna become more important for that kind of activity where I'm looking to move a little bit faster. But uh, we'll see how that goes as time progresses over the winter. The last thing I'll talk about is my feet. And so uh, last year I made a video of do I really need winter running shoes? Cause I looked at a whole bunch of different running shoes. And for what I do, I run mostly on pavement, I'm a road runner primarily during the warmer months. 
And in the winter months, a lot of that doesn't change. Most of my running is run commuting home from, from my uh, work downtown to where I live to go pick up the kids or, or whatever. And so I'm still on pavement. A lot of where I run is where they attempt to salt and plow it for the most part. And so sometimes I'm running in some snow and slush, but a lot of times I'm just running on really cold pavement. So a lot of times I don't need winter running shoes. Uh, but my general preference is that I like winter running shoes. I like that they're made for a little bit more grip in mind. I like that they're made to keep a little bit more water out for the most part. Uh, and so that's uh, important when you're going to be running in uh, several inches of snow, or, but more importantly, like if it's wet slushy conditions, that's when that moisture can really get inside your feet and get in through the shoe. So a winterized or a weatherized shoe, I think is really important there. They tend to be a little bit warmer because of all that treatment as well. So I really like those and I don't think a person absolutely needs them, but I certainly like to have them. The other thing that I'm testing around with is just running in like either trail shoes or beefier, just road shoes with thicker socks. So far this winter, I've just been running in regular running shoes uh, with cotton socks that go up a little bit taller. Normally I like kind of like low cut or no show socks, but I have also like, I guess they're crew length socks that I like that are just, I think they're Hanes or Fruit of the Loom, whatever I can find on Amazon that comes in a six pack. And those have been working out really well. The other thing that I'm toying around with a little bit more this winter is waterproof socks. This is a pair that I bought from a brand Showers Pass. I got them on Amazon. Um, the sizing is real weird. Normally with my hands or my feet, if there isn't a specific size, I usually go with like a small or a small slash medium. That's what I went with this one. That's way too small. So they're a little bit tight, but I could still kind of wear them and I, I probably will still wear these. Um, but check, check the sizing or if, you, if the sizing isn't clear, make sure to ask a question on Amazon. But for my size nines, I should have gone with a medium slash large. I, I think that's the next size up or maybe a large slash extra large, which is, seems weird. Um, but not the smallest size, which is what I have. These particular socks, I didn't feel like they were waterproof. I felt like they did a pretty good job of protecting me from water. I got my feet wet while I was running in these. Um, it's not the footage that you saw today. The footage that you saw today was just cotton socks and regular running shoes. Uh, feet were definitely cold, um, but I was able to make it. It wasn't a terribly long run today. But when I run in the waterproof socks, I got my feet like even more wet than I normally uh, might want to do uh, in these temperatures where it's really cold, air out, and then the water's cold. The water cold is one thing, but then when your feet are cold and the air is cold as well, um, it really starts to make me worry uh, about my feet freezing um, or getting affected uh, and damaged by the cold. Uh, it's, so it's not the water initially hitting you, it's the water and the air afterwards, that's my concern. With the waterproof socks, I felt like they did a very good job of protecting my feet from the initial like water exposure. But then afterwards, as there was still water in the shoe and like around the foot, I felt like there was water getting in. So I don't know if it's just these waterproof socks that are like that or all waterproof socks that are like that. I'll be testing it a little further. I'm not sure it's something that you need to get for the winter, but it's something that I'm going to be thinking about as I think about like regular running shoes and, and beefier socks to run in. I've also run in like stance socks and other uh, running specific winter socks or uh, crew length merino wool socks. I don't think that those make a huge difference for me in my experience uh, for cold weather running. Um, in fact, I still think I kind of prefer the much cheaper just cotton crew socks for winter running. Um, but uh, I'm also not a person that absolutely needs running socks when I run. I like thinner running socks in the summertime, but I don't need them for say blister prevention. So if that's you, then maybe the merino wool is probably something I think it's gonna work a little bit better for you. So uh, that's a long list. I think I covered everything that I brought out here in terms of props, but uh, it's a long list of things that I like to have for the winter. Um, it's probably a little bit more than a winter running essentials list. Um, for the essentials list maybe is like mittens, hand warmers, uh, balaclava, but uh, I, I just wanted to make sure you guys knew what I was gonna be running in from head to toe. I'm gonna be running more outside in the winter than ever. I'll be running more inside on the treadmill this winter than ever as well. The one thing that I'll close off with saying is winter running is great. I love it. I think more people should do it, but 
the very real thing to worry about, and I kind of touched about it, touched on it when I was talking about cell phones, is that um, uh, it's very easy to take it too far. And so there have definitely been times where I was like on a Saturday, I'm going to go for a long run or a longer run, and um, the cold gets to your head after a while, and your body just can't uh, maintain the right amount of blood circulation. And after a while, there have been times when I've been running out there and uh, I'll start to feel lightheaded or I'll start to feel like um, I'm a little bit buzzed or drunk. And so what I typically like to do is on days like that is I like to check and make sure I can do like mental math in my head. I have a hard time running and doing mental math already, but I'd like to just check to make sure I can at least do it to the poor level that I can normally do it. Um, those are signs that you're getting out there too long and you need to get back soon. And if that happens, um, you know, for me, I'm lucky. Uh, I run along the lakefront. So at any point, I'm not too far. If I absolutely need to bail to just cut inland a little bit and then get inside to a storefront um, or be able to call a taxi or something like that. Uh, make sure you have a way that you're never, you know, too far away from safety uh, in case something uh, were to happen to you in terms of the cold suddenly getting to be too much. If it's your first winter running, I would say limit it to an hour. Don't go out there for more than an hour at a time for those coldest of days. Uh, and then you can kind of gauge for yourself, build up to it and see kind of what where your comfort zones are. Um, but overall, first most important thing is be safe. Um, that's all I have to say about winter running. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or need more details. I'll try to post links to everything that I've talked about and the things that I'll be using the most in the description down below in case you wanna learn or about a little bit more or do some shopping yourselves. Um, before I go today, I wanna to talk about the charity run for this week. This week it's Jennifer Robbins who's gonna be running the Rock and Roll Las Vegas Half Marathon in honor of her mother and raising money for Chai Lifeline an organization that helps sick kids and their families. I was happy to donate $70 to her fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.